Hi, Year 3, Mrs Masuku here with your Lesson 16. We're already on to Lesson 16 of our line of inquiry. Wow, so we've been investigating lots of things and thinking a lot about how we can find out about people in the past. So today's Walt is we are learning to investigate historical sources. OK, and I'm going to share my screen with you so that you can see what would be on the board if we were at school. So just bear with me, let me find it. Here we go. OK, so we are learning to investigate historical sources and today we're going to be historians again. And remember that historians ask questions to investigate what life was like in the past. So what is a historical source? Well, in our last topic, where does the darkness come from? We were looking at sources, weren't we? But they were light sources. We were thinking about where light started from. And a historical source is something that tells us about history. So far in our line of inquiry, we've been looking at lots of different things that can give us information about the past. And those different things that given, can give us information about the past are called sources. So can you think now of any of the sources we've investigated? And you can say them to the screen. You don't need to write them down. Think about what have we used so far been able to tell us about the past. You might want to pause the video and talk to the screen and see what you can come up with. OK, I'm going to move my slideshow on. These are some of the things that we've used so far that are historical sources. So we've had Victorian photographs of school. We were looking at some old paintings, historical paintings. We were looking at some photos of what Easton used to look like, the area of Bristol where Bannerman Road School is and where lots of you live. We were looking at some descriptions of what Boudicca was like. And we were looking at Greenbank Cemetery, at the gravestones. They were historical sources that were telling us information about the past. So there are just some examples and you might have thought of some more as well. So. A historical source may be a document, a picture, it might be a sound recording, a book, it might be a film or a television programme or a picture or, oh, I've already said a picture, haven't I? Or a photograph, I meant, or an object. So any sort of artefact from the period in question that conveys, that gives information can qualify as a source. OK, so anything that you've got that tells you about the past, that is your source of information. And there are two main types of historical sources. There are primary sources and secondary sources. That's what we're going to be learning today. So I'll say it primary sources. You say it. And secondary sources. Good. So I've got some examples here of things that are primary sources and things that are secondary sources. So I want you to see if you can come up with a definition. If you think you can say what a primary source is and what a secondary source is by looking at the information below. So the example of a prime, some examples of a primary source would be a diary entry recalling events that were witnessed. So if somebody was there at the time and they've written a diary to say what it was like. It could be a letter telling someone about something that they saw happening. So if they actually witnessed it. And they've written a letter about it. That would be a primary source. A photograph of an event that would be a primary source. Or an artifact 
for example, a tool or a weapon from a particular time in history. All of those things are primary sources. What have they all got in common? Well, here are some examples of secondary sources. So a textbook written by a historian, that would be a secondary source. Someone retelling stories they were told by their grandparents, so the stories that are told over and over again, that would be a secondary source. An encyclopedia entry about a historical event. So something written down about the historical events. So if somebody's learned something and then they've written it down for you to read. An academic journal article written for pupils. What have all those things got in common? Is it primary sources or is it secondary sources that are written or taken from the event itself? And is it primary sources or secondary sources that seem to be written about the event from people that didn't actually witness it? There we are. Primary sources are original first-hand accounts of an event, topic or historical time period. OK, so primary sources are from that historical time or they are witness accounts, people that were actually there saying exactly how it was. Whereas secondary sources are second hand accounts that interpret primary sources. So it could be a historian telling you about the primary source. It might be a historian telling you about the weapon that they've got in front of them. But because they are telling you. It becomes a secondary source because you if that was if you didn't have the weapon in your hand. OK. It's a little bit tricky to get your head around, but have a look at these different primary sources and secondary sources and see if you can sort them. Which ones do you think are primary sources and which are secondary? You've got a copy of this in your work pack and next to it you can write a P or an S or you can cut them out and stick them into your book into different groups. So pause the video here and you can do that. Sort them into primary sources and secondary sources. OK, did you pause the video and have you sorted out these different primary and secondary sources? How did you get on? Well, the primary sources were a letter from someone involved in Battle of Falkirk. A photograph of the Queen on the day she opened the Scottish Parliament. And a sword from the 1600s. And then these ones were not primary sources. A lecture given in 2018 by a professor of the Victorian period about life in Edinburgh in the 1890s and textbook for ch school children about the Roman Empire. So they're both not primary sources because they aren't they aren't actually artifacts or sources from that period in time. They are accounts or their teachings from someone else who's learned about it and they're telling you more. Whereas the photograph and the letter and the sword are actually sources from that period of history. OK, so now I'm going to show you two primary sources from a football match, and they're both primary sources because they're accounts of the same football match. OK, I'll read them out for you. So. Our team was definitely better than the green team in the first half. They couldn't keep up with us. We should have had at least two penalties, but the referee was clearly on their side. 
in the second half, their striker got lucky and the ball bounced off him into our net. Our team kept fighting until the end, but we just couldn't quite get a goal back. We were just unlucky. Okay, so that is an account of a football match by a supporter of the blue team. And that supporter was actually there, so it is a primary source. It's his account of how the football match went. But now I'm going to read to you what the supporter of the green team said. What a brilliant game. We deserved the win. Our players completely outplayed them. The referee made some really important decisions in the first half. The blue team thought they deserved a couple of penalties, but their players were just diving. Our striker scored an excellent goal in the second half. Their keeper never saw it coming. After that, their team just gave up. All in all, it was a fantastic win for us. And that was written by a supporter of the green team. So we've got two primary sources there, both of the same football match. One person's giving an account of how they thought it went. They were the supporting the blue team. And one person has given an account of how they thought it went. And they were supporting the green team. So both accounts are of the same match. But why are they a bit different? Can you think why they might be a bit different? You can tell the screen. So they're different because of something called bias. I'll say it, then you say it. Bias. So both of the previous sources, those accounts of the football match were biased. And bias is a preference for or a prejudice against something. In the case of the football teams, each supporter had a particular bias for their team and against the other team. So the way that they saw that match is different. When we're reading sources, we have to be aware that there might be some bias, as this can affect the re reliability of the information we can get from the source. So if we think about it, if we've got um, a diary entry, from a soldier who's gone to war and he's told us what it was like when he was there, depending on whether his country is going to, if they, his country wins the war and the other soldier's country doesn't win the war, they're going to have a different account of that historical event and whether it was a good thing or a bad thing. So let's just have a little look at the work that you need to do for lesson 16. You need to fill in the different parts of the sheet. So you need to write down from having done this lesson, what a primary source is, what a secondary source is. Then you need to write down some examples of a primary source. And you need to write down some examples of a secondary source. And remember, we were thinking about which are more reliable, primary sources or secondary sources. Do you think that primary sources are more reliable or secondary? Remember, primary sources are things that were actually there at that period of time. And secondary sources are people telling you about what it was like. OK, so that's what you need to do for lesson 16. Remember, you can go back and watch more other parts of this video where I recap what primary and secondary sources are for you. If you want to, it might help you with the sheet. But well done, year three. Keep up the excellent work and don't forget to send your a picture of your work to your teacher. So either to me or Mr. Matthews. Bye-bye.